Okay, so this is our first time into this place. I've seen it. Carl hasn't seen it. We're going to be doing an estate sale here soon. Whoa, yes, thank you. Oh, I love it. And um, hey, you actually missed the step. That's good. A lot of other folks had trouble with this. Yeah. <laughs> this is a reproduction, but it's a pretty cool looking one. At least I think it is. Well, no, you know what? This looks... I have to see it up close. It's really cool. There's a little bit of Empoli glass, and yeah, I like that little piece of furniture. It's a nice low uh, stand, and there's some Viking glass on it, and there's a little Lennox and a little Bing and Grondel, and kind of the usual things ladies of this era collected, I guess. This seems like it's an attractive cut piece, and we need to see if we can find a maker identifier on that. So are these your prices? No, um, the folks actually knew somebody from um, the Nashville area who does sales, who are friends of theirs, and they were thinking of doing the sale themselves, so their friends priced a bunch of stuff, and honestly, a lot of their prices seem right to me. A few of them, you know, it's a different market and I will change, but some of the ones they did, I think I'll just leave alone because they've done some of the work for us. Obviously, there's a lot of restaging to do. Lots of crystal, wow. A whole bunch of crystal. $20 for the pair on this is probably fine. Is this Nippon? Uh, it looks like it to me, although it could be Czech. They did that luster too. Little Royal Albert. Some chintz. It doesn't have a mark at all. That might actually... My eyes are just... Oh, yeah. Oh, that's Czechoslovakia. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Well, just the round uh, mark. Little piece of early 1900s porcelain. All right, here is the kitchen. I see a Snoopy glass. That'll sell for something. It's not an estate that has a ton of really, really valuable stuff in it, but it's a good venue and we are going to be able to bring in some additional things from a couple of other estates. So we'll have a lot of fun by the time we get to it. There is a big piece of Port Marion and there are other pieces of Port Marion in the house here. Tupperware, salt and pepper. We are going to be able to sell some of the appliances. Bunch of Royal Dalton character jugs. And I actually had someone request those at the Mount Dora show. So I'm holding the prices the way they have them because if not, I can take them there and sell them for them next month. Steubenville. Little Libby said it's nice that it has the bale. We'll see if we can find that last glass. Lots of Hummels. Hummels are selling again. You have to price them inexpensively, but they will sell. Some nice wall brass. That's not Jure or anybody, but it is cute, and so are the sconces. And then, boy, a bunch of miscellaneous stuff here to look through. It's a regular old estate, so there's going to be housewares and household stuff. The Pepsi bottle has been turned into a laundry sprinkler. There is... Some patio furniture, including a few metal pieces that are pretty good. A lot of it is just this basic pipe stuff, but we'll price that inexpensively. But I see a nice set here. It looks like a couple of different chairs and some tables, maybe four chairs and a center table and a side table that are cast iron. The wheat table is a good piece with the brass bottom. That's right out of the 70s. And then... The chandelier no one has claimed either. I guess we can sell this chandelier. Oh, cool. Yeah. You find anything in there? I think they stripped this pretty... A little bit of Fire King, yeah. This room's pretty empty, but we have things to bring. I think Are these microwaveable? Not that one, because it's the Peach Luster has a metallic oxide to make the carnival finish. And carnival finish luster, you that's like, it's it's got enough metal in it, it'll fry in the microwave, yeah. Yeah, that's one of the reasons it doesn't sell like it would if it was any other uh, color, but it is fun. These are Napco weird, a little candle climber. Nice. This is pretty. Oh, that's neat. Old crown table lighter. This is Nippon, and this is the Morimura brothers who imported Noritake, so that's a pretty cabinet vase. Yeah, sometimes you will find sterling or coin silver in those, but that one looks pretty shiny too. Little Italian dishes there and some Capo de Monte. Yeah, well, that's a nice Victorian piece. It'll sell in any event. The furniture is pretty traditional, but you know, there's some will do well and some will probably sit with. 
the old Diet Coke glasses. Oh, yes. Oh, is this actual Tupperware? Yeah, there are some Tupperware, the salt and peppers in there. Yeah, that's my holiday. 1934 World's Fair Guidebook. And this is a good book here. 1933, the Chicago, Chicago and the World's Fair. So those we'll definitely find customers for. And then it looks like there's a whole bunch of yearbooks and annuals and other such things. Hop Chain Checker Game. Oh, that's great, actually. People like Chinese checkers. And we've had a couple of billy clubs, oddly enough, as well. This is the plain side. This is the side with a little bit of design. This is a replica of an old radio. I don't know that it'll go for 50, but we'll look them up and verify that. Some old luggage here. This room also not a lot going on. An Art Modern little shelf in the corner there. But we will bring in tables. We will put these linens up. We'll go through the clothes and see if there's anything vintage. There are some women's clothes in the other cabinet as well. Most of the music seems to be things that are not pop or big sellers, but hey, somebody buys records these days, so we'll leave them there and see what they do when they dig through them. Probably a Whiting and Davis purse, I imagine, because of the age of this estate. Eh, it might be Japanese to look like that. We'll do a little more looking there. The boudoir furniture is kind of cute little desk there. A nice old uh, old looking lamp anyway. I'm not sure if this is an old candle base that they made into a lamp. It feels like it's heavy. All the science. Is this world's favorite? Oh, cool. Yeah, it definitely is. That is uh, 1933 Chicago. I found a book in one of the other rooms that's 33 World's Fair. And then, uh, oh, those are fun. Three of them. Oh, three the monkeys. Four eighty-seven. Oh, I'm embarrassed to say I saw that tour. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Nesmith wasn't on it, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I they played at the fairgrounds near me, and my friend's mother wanted to go. And it actually, they were more fun than I thought. My favorite part was when they said, we can't play our instruments. And then they stopped playing their instruments and all the sounds stopped. And then they proceeded to play. And it was yeah. like, oh yeah, they do know how to play, actually. <laughs> this is a whole set of Candlewick by Imperial. And this is starting to sell again. So it'll be good to see how best to sell these. I suspect we will probably put the candelabra at one price and the cake stand at one price, but sets of plates and things will go together in hopes that we can get a new collector going on it. There's a bunch of Christmas Hallmark ornaments. There's a bunch of Christmas in the garage, a bunch more Goebel stuff, including these two under the dome here. Hey, everybody. This is a nice old mirror frame from about 1900 in very good condition. Then we're heading out into the garage. In the garage, we do have a washer and dryer for sale. And if you don't have a pot, well, we have a pot. This is Manhattan glass. It's funny how sometimes you'll see collectible patterns. This is 1930s sitting here in the middle of a bunch of very boring floral vases that came from the florist in the 1960s and 70s. Other than the press cut, most of those will not sell. So it's nice to find one that's good. The press cut punch bowl is down here. And then there are some useful things, which is good because a lot of people come to a sale like this looking for useful things. We will see if these tiles match anything. And if they don't, we would put them out to sell because they're kind of a fun color. As long as they don't need them. The important thing, they're Italian tiles. The important thing, of course, is that we have to respect the house and make sure it has what it needs for sale. Here's a bunch of small mosaic as well. Ooh, and a silverfish running across it. And then, oh, baskets and a bunch of Christmas stuff in boxes and a bunch of who knows what else in boxes. A rusty but working condition chest freezer. Little mini bar type setup. This is a piece of custard glass that might glow in a black light. It was a souvenir from Decatur, Indiana. And some custard from back then has a lot of uranium and some has very little. This is what we're hoping to do. These are newer coat closet here. The shelf clock is kind of cute because it's got the shelves. A very handsome oak paneled desk here from about 1920. There's also a number of antiquarian books. We'll have to spend a little bit of time 
going through some of these. A lot of these are religious because the gentleman of the house was a master of divinity, actually. But there are other books in here as well, particularly these. And then some histories, seven great monarchies, and then these German books. A lot of people are taking these sets and using them just as decoration to create interesting texture in big bookshelves where some people are not necessarily collecting books for themselves, but they'll buy them for show. So we'll see what we have to show. And what would you think? Typewriter desk, sadly no typewriter. A couple of computer peripheral pieces. The metal boxes here and maybe even the metal lawyer's bookcase, but definitely the metal boxes here should find some sort of a home. Bucko Bruce, the old Tampa Bay Buccaneers logo. People around here collect that. They had a pretty decent season this year too. That always helps. That it's not a prettier color. Oh, they have the box even. Oh, that's a good thing. But it's plain white and it's definitely... Oh yeah, H2O, it's been a little bit warm, but so. the box existing is actually pretty yeah. good for that. I think that alone is worth something. Cool. Some old needle cases, the A and P. I always think of Crazy Lamp Lady and uh, Digger Drew because his grandparents Probably worked A &P. at A and P. Yeah. I keep hoping to find some old Publix. Oh uh, yeah, you know I don't see a lot. I see the pictures on the stores that they do in retrospect, but I never see old Publix stuff. This is neat. Airline twin speaker. So there's a few decent radios here, and even this silly one from the 80s, if we clean it up with the cassette recorder, might sell for something. You never know. It's been a while now. Paper cutter. I see some old lighting. There might be camera equipment, a little bit of old stereo equipment. Yeah, and there's a little bit of stereo equipment under there. Mark Eden bus developer. I actually remember the commercial of her advertisement. Really? Yeah. Uh, if it worked. Yeah. I'm sure it worked for somebody. I'm sure it worked well for the fabulous Mark Eden. Mark, yeah. I don't know. Office supplies? But who knows? It could be bones. bones? Oh. There might be dental gold or something. Nope, it's game. Oh, bones like dice. Oh, well, those are cool. Oh, that's a nice set. I like this little green shelf. Funnily enough, it's a sort of circa 1970 antiquing, and generally I'm not fond of this, but I think it looks good on this one for some reason. And we might have something vintage in there, including old Reeboks. So apparently these folks, um, they were a minister and his wife, and they also did some missionary work and knew people who did. So I'm sure things were brought back to them. Big old aluminum cookware. That sometimes goes for something now. Westmoreland twist. I've seen the ones where it's like marketed for some... Yeah, do not, uh, yeah, for some store, or it says do not um, use with food. That's always one of my favorite ones. <laughs> it's a food bowl, don't put food in it. Useful newer appliances we will put back in the kitchen. A few useful yard tools, and yes, there is a staghorn fern. They're deciding whether they're gonna let us sell it. Plus a whole lot of canes. That's kind of neat with that carved end and the inlays in mosaic there. I'm not sure how they did that. It looks like enameling. Usually you'd expect it to look like this. So there's a couple of nice older canes. A bunch of yard sticks. For various and sundry. Carpet world. Carpet. Carpet. Lots of carpet. And I've been warned that there are things up in this attic. A lot of Florida attics don't have things in them. Some Florida attics have creepy crawly things in them, so we'll go up in there when we have two people here. One can be on the ladder and make sure the other person is okay. Now we know we have our work cut out for us, but it looks like it's manageable. We'll have about four days to get it together and then have the sale over a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We are back at the estate sale. It's happening this weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday here in Largo, Florida. And we've made quite a bit of progress. I'd say we're 80% set up and maybe a third priced. And that's pretty good because Carl came over the weekend and then my crew and I have been here for two days. And we found out we get to sell the Staghorn Fern. I'm very excited about that. We're gonna put $200 on that and hopefully someone will back under it with their pickup truck, lower it in and take it away. And there are some good things in the house. We've unearthed quite a few interesting pieces, lots of things. Our viewers will recognize and a lot of collectors recognize these days. 
the Diamond Point Ruby Flash by the Westmoreland Wedding Stand. All of these Ruby Flash pieces, the candlesticks that go with the wedding stand are pretty nice. I like the etched goblets there. And then we have these very pretty looking bohemian pieces that look Victorian. Nice iron hall table. Nice little bar behind this power scooter. And the scooter is going to be worth several hundred. The marble obelisk, I think, is really, really cool. These paintings and prints have been researched. They are listed artists. We have the Lighthouses of Florida's Keys. This is Don Swain. I've had Don Swain prints before based on his lithographs. This is number 119 of a series of 300 from Alexandria, Virginia. He did a lot of Mid-South scenes. Jerry Smith is an artist out of Rockport, Massachusetts. I think this little pick set is really cool with the stones. I would probably pick that up if I came in here. We've got the living room just about put back the way that we imagine that maybe it was at one time. We can tell by the collecting interests of the lady of the house that she was a collector when Royal Daltons were very popular. And she has some very, very lovely ones. We can do a little bit of study about them as we look at them. They usually have their name. This is Autumn Breezes. Autumn Breezes is one that was very popular in its time. And that seems to be a 1950s era mark. This one with the Narcissus or Daffodils. Very cute. This one a little bit older. That number next to the Royal Dalton mark tells us its age. So this is likely to be 1930s. Part of the reason so many people of a certain era collected these is because there was a period during the war you couldn't get them. This is Miss Demure, and she certainly is. Very cute. I do not see her as often as I see some of the other ones here. This one is very popular, again, because of the applied flowers. And this woman's just given up wearing the hat at all. Blythe Morning. And you see the copyright date in the 1940s on this one. So we have a lot of 1940s and 50s here, which is nice. They are older, and the painting is a little more subtle on the old ones. The basket weave is cute here. These are all little Italian pieces. We're not charging a fortune for any of them, but we will come back and we will price these now and Bing and Grondel figures. The fisherman whittling is cool. The woman sewing is great. I did like this little hand-painted basket. And this piece is Noritake. Coming down here, a Fenton piece on the right, a Czech flower frog in the foreground here another Royal Dalton piece, and then some Wedgwood. Now I've got to tell you, Wedgwood, Jasperware in particular, I was mentioning that it was coming back in an era where modernism like Corning creative floating glass candles might be something you'd think would be more popular, but we are seeing real interest in neoclassicism happening right now, and so Wedgwood is making a comeback. A smart dealer will buy those pieces because they're in the original boxes, and they're from about 45 years ago. We don't have any 78 records to play on the old phonograph, but that's a neat looking piece with his master's voice, sheet music. We have a few things still to unpack. We have a few things that we haven't figured out where to place. This is really cool. This is a mobile bank Pegasus baseball bank. This is really cute, familiar faces. This is something that was given out by a decorating company, but it is all very cute stuff based on children. There are some good books in this house. There's a few sets. We'll see those a little bit later. The Doré Bible Gallery is something that we're putting aside because we don't want it to be mishandled. Also some nice World's Fair stuff. There's the Chicago World's Fair in 1933, 34, and the guide. Also a little metal tray. So somebody in the family went to the World's Fair a few times. Probably the same person who had this old Durex shaving set. Railroad playing cards. There were a bunch of playing cards and the Braniff that have never been opened and the Santa Fe Railroad. And Florida, of course, because we're in Florida. And you see the bell tower there. Those will be the most interesting to the folks coming to this sale. And this is from the 
bicentennial of the birth of George Washington. This says U.S. regulation. It is World War I. It is a great bugle. It could be World War II, I suppose, because they didn't change much. So if you have a boogie-woogie bugle boy in your family, bring him along. A little bit of fun railroad ephemera and other blotters here. The sofa is nice and clean and has a nice modern design. The brass table is definitely the type of thing out of the early 80s. We're starting to see people collect here. We're going to do a little research on this set because this is signed in a very interesting way by Sidney T. Callowhill. This is a really cool Cambridge Caprice Bowl. I just love that pattern. I've never gotten tired of it. There's the Calla Lily Trivet, a classic from the 80s. This very heavy lead crystal bottle seems like something that should be signed in some place. And I have yet to find the signature, and we're in a good light, and I'm not seeing one, but sometimes they're signed in places other than the bottom. So we'll do a little more research on that before we price it. Younger people are starting to buy lead crystal again because they don't mind using it and then washing it out and not leaving things in it so they don't have to worry about lead. This table is a classic. This should be about the first thing that sells. I tried to decorate it somewhat sparsely and with things you could see through so you could see the wheat base. It absolutely will fly out of here. This is very pretty the way this is cut. This piece has a nice pinwheel design. This is cut glass. It's not quite deep enough or early enough to be brilliant cut glass. This is probably from about the 1920s, but it is a very pretty piece in good condition and only $18. Several Lennox pieces, I think some of the more distinctive patterns of later years. And there's also this piece in the box, which is the Crystal Star Vase. A bunch of these Napoleon and other Capo de Monte marked figures on one of these very classic 1970s hexagonal end tables. Boy, we have some Hummels. We have some more Hummels, too. These seem to be middle period trademarks. There's some cute ones like the Fisherman. We are not gonna charge a lot for these, but they are selling if you charge the correct amount. There's an ashtray there, and we'll show you a bunch more in another room. This is a nice lithograph, another known artist who worked in both Rhode Island and Florida by the name of Robert Chase, priced at $95. Those little stilt houses were still standing in Key Biscayne and the harbor in front of Miami when I first came here in the 1990s. There is a bunch of costume jewelry here, mainly fun jewelry. Really fun art pieces on the wall too. This one here is a listed artist. It's the Tempest in the Teacup. William Richard Crutchfield did this one originally and that price is half of what they've currently been selling for. Since the house was sort of a blank slate, we decided to stage this part red because, well, it's Valentine's Day, see? There's a Viking candy compote, nice controlled bubble piece of Empoli on the left and a snifter on the right. This one actually has the correct label. One nice thing about being in an estate is you don't have to necessarily worry that the pieces are not the age that they should be. I like these little acrylic pieces with the roses, and then we have some other nice crystal and elegant glass down into the bottom there. More crystal pieces. The china cabinet is nice. We know china cabinets are not an easy sell, so we'll see what happens with this one, but we do have a nice Waterford crystal desk stand there, some Paragon cups and saucers, and some Scottish cup and saucers, a nice little vase from the Hotel Drake in Chicago. Mikasa Angel is something we'll have to look up. Mikasa is starting to sell a couple of nice serving plates that are Bavarian china. We have a very nice Bavarian china set in another room we'll show you. On this wall, I really like the marionettes, the way they're hung here. <laughs> so we just left them, even though they're sort of blocking this really cute shelf, but I think the shelf will sell just fine. Since we're seeing people starting to put silver plate displays together, we separated some of the better stuff. In the kitchen, we have some fun things. I love the old canister set, very industrial. The original crock pot in glorious orange, and then there's a ninja behind for modern cooks. Some French white, a little bit of Corning Corel. I like the old fry cutter and the fact that it has the original box. 
These are pretty cute. We know people are starting to get excited about certain kinds of bugs, and these are Studio Nova from the 1980s. That is a company whose stuff I'm starting to look for, and only $4 to set. Well, I think that'll fly out of here. Old school Sunbeam Mixmaster with the 70s orange topper. That is just great. An old juicer, the Pepsi Cola bottle that's made into a laundry sprinkler. This is actually a rather old Heinz vinegar bottle. And we've got a nice little grinder there. U.S. Trade Center London Housewares Show. That seems like a very specific event. Old 1930s coffee jar for $8. Some more Corel ware, lots of kitchen ware, cartoon glasses, Coca-Cola glasses, and then we come out here and we find some really nice china. This is Rosenthal Moss Rose. This is one of their most famous patterns. It is a pattern that derived with them back in Victorian times. A very, very pretty pattern and pretty surprisingly valuable still. Yes, I know it breaks the law of having a gold rim, but for the people who like this, this many pieces with some really good serving pieces, the covered casserole in particular, this square bowl, minus our mixed nuts, the relish tray, the gravy boat. We are going to ask around $200 for this because I believe this set is about 500 plus shipping on eBay. We're in Florida, so yes, Tupperware, and they had some older pieces, some that were made in Orlando back when it was based here. So we priced some of those. I think one of the cutest ones is the donkey salt and pepper there. This club chair is a very good brand. This is a brand that can go for quite a high number when new. It's worn in just the right ways. It's Hancock and Moore, made in North Carolina. And this is a really comfortable chair. We are going to have to put a little bit of a number on that because it is something. And then there's this. This is so great. Its brand name is Regimental, which we see inside when we get to it. It's got all these great old stickers from places people went. And you open it up and it's actually the wardrobe style, the steamer trunk with the hangers. And there is the regimental label. So this is one of the cooler things in the house as far as I'm concerned. I would buy it if I came in. Some more original art. Some of these pieces are pretty good. Even the print of the Native American over there is pretty decent. And some of the baskets are pretty good. So there are some nice things throughout the house. The sconces and the wall stuff are fun. And then over here, we have a few Royal Dalton jugs, the characters. A nice stein, the Steubenville woodbine pattern is this leaf set here. And a nice Libby glass set. But on this table, in addition to glass fruit and some nice old mixing bowl sets and this sort of thing, we have a bunch of Port Marion, and Port Marion is so popular right now. So I know we're going to have people rush right to that. And to be honest, that's why we put it on this end of the table, because we figured then as soon as it's gone, the people will not be standing in the middle of the aisle for it. This room has a really cute furniture set and just a lot of cuteness in general. I ended up putting a lot of the kids stuff in here and there's some fun kids stuff in this place. I like this little desk or vanity. The mirror above it is a basic plastic mirror with a good shape from about 1970. The lamp, on the other hand, is definitely more substantial. This is a nice looking great pattern from an earlier time, a candlestick that was converted into a lamp. And there's water fountains and snow globes and this beautiful, although unfortunately slightly damaged, Czech jewelry casket. But look at the jeweling on that. Isn't that amazing? Cute little Howard Miller anniversary clock. This thing is really cool. Let's get it turned on. I love the neon. Dove. It's just really cute. And this stack of boxes has a sweet countenance to it. This is a nice older composition doll from the 1930s with original clothes, and it looks a lot like the Shirley Temple dolls from that time, but the hair is not. Raggedy Ann and Andy, a Nancy Ann storybook doll with the original paperwork. This is a cute little paper arc here. And then this purse, this is something that should sell right away. This is fun. These 1970s purses are definitely a fashion thing right now. 
This is a really neat mobile from about 1950 in the original box. And I do like the Italian table lamp from the 1970s very much. That is something that in the right context could be priced much higher than it will be here. Here's a nicely shaped mirror. Hello, everybody. The chest of drawers here is a reasonable size to move and decent quality. I like the lingerie chest. The unicorn print is by Gloria from 1985. Unicorns were a big fad in the mid 80s, so another thing from the 80s to watch for. Along with, of course, anything to do with Star Wars. I think this C-3PO model kit is actually a little older. The Star Trek piece is cool. There's actually some decent little toys in here. We've got a Revell slot car, the Stingray, and a few other slot cars that seem to be in pretty good shape in here. That's not something we come into very often. I wish we had the rest of it, but it's great to have those pieces. The Hopching Chinese Checker game is in here. People like to hang those on the wall. The Cox Control Line Fighter. That's a pretty collectible piece. R2-D2 in the box. So there's actually some good toys and games in the middle of all of this. In a few games we haven't gotten completely done here. We'll have to see how many stars the flag has. And, ooh, is that a Masonic Fez? Well, let's see whose this is. Ah, interesting. This appears to be an actual Fez. You had to know I was going to do it. This is a cute little display of some older perfumes and an Enid Collins box purse. Very happy to find that. Then we get into here. Now, the dining table is Thomasville. It's got the original chairs, leaves, and everything. We know that traditional dining sets are not selling tremendously well right now, but this one is very good quality, reasonably comfortably styled, and in really good shape. And we have put the Lady of the House's original pattern out. This is Candlewick by Imperial. I've mentioned Candlewick before. We need to dust and we need to price, but we'll get to that. These pieces have the little balls, the candle wicking all around the edge. It was the most famous of all of Imperial Glassware's lines. They made 641 different pieces in the set. And there's some pretty good pieces here, in addition to all of the dinner plates, salad plates, soup, bowls, uh, mustard with a ladle. There's the jam pot, that's hard to find. Just in time for Valentine's, the heart-shaped server. There's two types of bowls. See these that are regular serving bowls, and these have graduated little balls that get bigger as you get to the edges. These are snack trays and lots of cups to go with them. So you have a tray with an indent. Those were done in the 50s and weren't in the line as long. I believe this came out in the 1930s. It's elegant depression glass, so if you had a little bit of money, this is what you got because it was fire polished, it was very clear, and in those ways it was a better quality than regular depression glass. Now, lest you think this stuff doesn't sell anymore, the cake stands recently are selling for $35 to $40 plus shipping on eBay. So we're going to price plates as stacks. We're going to price serving pieces individually. We're not going to go crazy. We want to make sure that somebody will buy these pieces, but they really should because it is a good pattern, still in demand. There's also some nice cut crystal that we've spread through here. Some later 20th century, like these tall candlesticks. Some early to mid 20th century, like the drinking tumblers here in the vase. They really did like the crystal. Here's an interesting thing to show you for future reference behind this cruet. Cruets are good sellers, by the way. For me, anyway. This one, which is only priced at $8, is because at some point it must have been a family heirloom that somebody broke. Probably a taller vase. And in order to not throw it away, they had it professionally ground. And they did a pretty good job of leaving the pattern so you could see it and made an undulating form. But they weren't able to polish it completely clear because they're not firing it in a kiln again. So that is a way to spot a repair on crystal. I put some of the more interesting pieces on top. Again, these are later 20th century, but I like the 1980s Neo Deco style. This one is Jennifer Winship, and it's just fun. They have a wonderful place here. If you're wondering why you're seeing seafaring stuff, well, this is right where a creek lets out into a canal that goes out into the intercoastal waterway and on out into the Gulf of Mexico. So since we're on the pool deck anyway, we managed to find room for a whole lot of utensils. This house is full 
of things that are useful. And then we sprinkle a few things that are useful and pretty collectible. These are Wagner ware and these are Magnolite from the 1950s. Those are good pieces and have a pretty good collector market. The furniture here is woodard, we are pretty certain, and that makes this pretty collectible as well from the 1960s. It looks like it could clean up and uh, there aren't any holes in the upholstery. This is a old studio pottery bell from 1995, and for a lot of people that's getting to be old enough to be vintage, this is Clay Creations by Marianne. And there's a little mark inside there. And this mark harms 1995. I like the use of the intaglio effect with the natural branches to get that deep recessed pattern in there. And then we found this in the garage. This is just so bright and fun, it kind of ties this patio together. The chandelier is for sale. This is going to be crystal from the 1960s or 70s. We even have an article showing which chandelier it was when it was purchased new. So let's see if we can find out about that. That's one reason this is fun. Moss Brothers was the big department store in this part of Florida at the time. They had wonderful things. Imported cut crystal chandeliers, half price. Half price could still be $200 in 1961. Thing is, we won't get $200 for it here. And that is why going to estate sales is a great way to buy things for your home that are really nice for way less than retail or to buy things for resale. This room is primarily office and office supplies. There is a neat old airline radio in here though from about 1950. A pretty cool industrial cabinet with a little bit of variety in terms of its function. That's nice. And then some pretty fun radios over time. This has the original in it. We showed you that earlier in the video. But this one's got a cute look to it. This one's very 80s here with the cassette deck. And then these lights, the mobile light is a clip-on from about 1980. And those definitely sell as vintage. So we'll have a lot of things for useful home use, like office furniture and office things. But there are some items here that are collectible for other reasons. These drawers seem to be selling on the vintage market. And then we have a really old safe. It's got a really old lock, which we'll have to make sure no one actually locks because we do not have the key for it, unfortunately. It could be taken to a locksmith, but this is a nice, heavy, heavy old safe. Should date to about 1890 or 1900. Couple of good old binoculars here. The Tasco are good Japanese binoculars from a little later in time, and these are earlier. We'll have to make sure that these aren't military or something that would have extra value. And then a pair of Bushnells. Sewing stuff, well, we've got some, and we have a little bit that's collectible, actually, a kind of fun find over here, and that is these. This is from the Rochester Button Company, and it, they are sample cards. This is the way a lot of button collectors show their stuff. But here it is, original from this company, probably around 1970, I imagine. And some of them are pretty good. I like the Corozine, and I especially like this one because it shows a lot of different varieties. So I think some of our button collectors and sewing notions folks will like that. And then the chair it's on is a nice old oak office chair from about 1930. And those sell pretty well these days. And now we're getting back into the media room. The media room needs some work, but there are some older pieces in here. There's some older stereo equipment in the house. There's also these old books, Luther's work. These are German, and it makes sense being in minister's house that a lot of these, as well as this set on Luther, have to do with Lutheranism and his struggles. The Seven Great Monarchies, as well as a genuine, authentic, fake Trick Dog Mechanical Bank. I love the paperwork. We have it in another room. It says that it is an authentic replica. Well, then it's not authentic. <laughs> However, a lot of these books are, and a few of them are going to have a premium value. So we're doing some research on that. This is a very interesting and pretty pattern of cut glass with a lot of etching as well as cutting and pressing in the pattern. And this is a nice heavy old pattern glass compote from about 1900. For local interests, Bucko Bruce and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, back when they first were getting to the playoffs. And that's a pretty cool thing. There's a lot of collectors for these around here. 
lots of recipe books, a lot of religious books that probably will have a limited market. Music, we've got vinyl, we've got eight tracks, we've got an old typewriter and a couple of typewriter stands, and a few newer computer pieces. Mostly we have monitors and kind of typical things, but we also have a couple of Sling TV items here. We've got these tapes, these old tapes actually, if they haven't been used, people buy those. These coal steel boxes, these sell. There are some decent canes here, especially the patterning on this one. The stag handled one should sell for something extra. All right, back past the horn, we come into this room, which is primarily linens and overflow. There is another nice old suitcase set. Some useful things like a folding wheelchair that sell in Florida, a little bit of furniture, various linens. Nice little 1940s art modern corner shelf. When we're doing estate sales, of course, we're looking at reselling for the client and how much can we get for them. So in this room, we have an Electrolux vacuum and it's got some nice parts with it and it will sell for a little more than the vacuum in the other room. So we're gonna sell the Electrolux for the client and keep the one in the other room for after the sale. Another grouping of Hummels, a lot of famous ones some of the candles. This set here is something that's a little harder to find though. We're going to definitely price it accordingly. It's the wedding set, but it has a little heart-shaped box and was done as a gift set at some point when Goebel still owned Hummels. Goebel does not own the Hummel franchise anymore. They sold it. This needs to be cleaned a little bit because it was outside and had sand in it, but this is a very pretty hand-painted Spanish vase from the 1970s. A lot of tatting and lace that we have to set up still and yes, more crystal, more jewelry. These are all the pearls and pearl-like things. A bathroom with some pretty good fragrances and a couple of pretty cool bottles that are collectible. We keep all the boxes to be able to help the customers and so the, every bathroom is full of them now. And for those of you who like retro, this bathroom is so 1970. Yellow toilet, the impressionist wallpaper. I mean, it's perfect. I wouldn't want to change a thing except maybe the drapes. This clock is very nice and was handcrafted for the family and is a Dutch-made clock from a kit with delft faces. It works really well. It has a great sound to it. So I think this one is going to be a little bit more than your average banjo clock. A great old floor safe or attaching safe if you wanted to bolt it to a wall. A Bundy. Looks like 1950s and it's got the key. The folks who lived here were a minister and his wife and their family. So there's a really lovely spinet piano that I'm sure has been played a number of times in good condition. If you're going to have a piano to sell, this is the one because it doesn't take up as much room. So we have our fingers crossed that someone will take this away. A nice old pre-1900 carriage clock. And this appears to be an American made one. This is a really cool piece because it has to do with this house. This is reminding you that you could have bought at Harbor Hills. And this one says, I did buy at Harbor Hills in 1959. And I guess that's when they got this house. The washer and dryer work and can be sold. Susan did a ton of work getting things organized today out here. She's got a whole bunch of Christmas, including this mega fun ornament that somebody made. <laughs> that is right out of the 70s. I don't really know what's in here. She and I haven't had a chance to discuss it since she's gone through it, but I know she found a few fun things. That looks like St. Patrick's Day in a box. There are some mysteries left to be found. What are in these boxes in the garage? What are in the boxes that the client is going to bring because she has a few things from her house that she would like to see go? And what mysteries await us up in the attic? We know there's things up there we haven't been up to see, so I guess you'll just have to stick with us and find out what we find. If you are in the Largo, Florida area this weekend, please come by and see us. We'd love to show you around and let you have fun, and these things are going to be priced for resellers. So if you're one of those, well, come on out. And if you are not in the Largo, Florida area, well, please click thumbs up to like this video. Please tell your friends about our channel, and we will just keep on bringing you more and more fun as we find it in the antique and vintage world.
If you enjoyed this video, check out this one. Also, click thumbs up to like this video and check the description for information about our Patreon, our memberships. We've got a lot of different levels with different perks and bonus videos and early content. Also, please do check out our website, theantiquenomad.com, for appraisal help. And we'll see you again for more adventures in the antique and vintage community soon. Bye for now.